Here's something that'll grab you. The United States has supplied 1.1 million rounds of ammunition to Ukraine, ammunition that was seized from Iran. How's that for an intriguing turn of events? Hey everyone, you're tuned in to Hear the Web with your hosts. I'm Tom. And I'm Lily. Today we're delving into the fascinating and complex world of international conflict and aid. This information comes from the U.S. Central Command, also known as CENTCOM. Evidently, these rounds were confiscated from a ship destined for Yemen back in December. Quite an unexpected diversion, wouldn't you say, Tom? Absolutely, Lily. It's noteworthy since Ukraine's Western allies revealed recently that they were struggling to keep up with the rate at which Ukraine was using ammunition. Now, let's dive deeper. The ammunition is 7.62 mm caliber, for those into specifics, used mostly in Soviet-era rifles and light machine guns, prime for Ukraine's current needs. Right you are, Tom. And while this contribution is significant, it actually just represents a tiny fraction of the hundreds of millions of rounds that allies have sent to Ukraine. The U.S. alone has already provided over 200 million bullets and grenades, so this addition from seized Iranian ammunition is quite something. We also need to highlight that these Iranian munitions were seized from a stateless ship named Marwen-1 through a process called civil forfeiture. This is when an asset is seized when its owner is suspected to be involved in criminal activities. In this situation, the claim was brought against Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Iran, in the meantime, supports the Houthi rebels in Yemen's ongoing civil war but arms transfers to the group are forbidden under a 2015 resolution by the UN Security Council. Iran has also been accused of supplying arms, most notably drones, to Russia for use in the war in Ukraine. So there's an undeniable complexity to this situation. As Ukrainian MP Oleksandr Vasyuk stated, the transfer proves once again that the US is our strong ally. These seized weapons and ammunition could have been simply disposed of, but Washington understands how important it is for us to get help. Another factor worth discussing here is that the rising concern among Western allies over their continued ability to arm Kyiv. Even at the start of the war, NATO countries' ammunition stocks had been more than half empty because of decades of underinvestment. It may be time to reevaluate defense budgets. And let's not leave out the larger, systemic issue here. The Biden administration is looking for alternative ways to provide assistance to Ukraine amid opposition from Congress. Funds allocated to Ukraine are almost depleted, but interference from the Republican right prevents further approval of additional funds. Yes, Tom. It's a political quagmire that's affecting military aid for Ukraine at the moment, and it's set to continue into next week at the earliest. It wouldn't be surprising if the next speaker also faces similar opposition. In a nutshell, the global scene's a chessboard, with moves and countermoves influencing who gets what help. A lot more is at play than it seems on the surface, with the 1.1 million rounds of ammunition to Ukraine becoming a symbol of nuanced alliances. Nothing is as simple as black and white, especially in global politics. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode of Hear the Web. Thanks for listening in. We are always here to bring you the latest on the web. Absolutely. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed. This is Tom and Lily signing off. Bye for now.